Welcome back to Keep On Creating. I'm Mike, this is my teacher printers. Yep, let's create something. So if you're new here, remember to hit that subscribe button and ding the bell so you know when a fresh episode comes in. Because life can be a bit random and so can my videos. And welcome aboard to all the new subscribers. It's great having you aboard. So what's been happening? Well, it's been busy. I've been trying to do a little project on the side, which I'll hopefully announce in the next few weeks, but I'm getting there. And that's why there was no video last week because I've been trying to do a lot. So what are we doing today? Today, we're gonna to be doing an effect in Illustrator. Now this effect we did in Affinity Designer. So if you are Affinity Designer based, you go ahead and try to create this effect in Affinity Designer, although we're doing it in Illustrator. When you do the effect, make sure you upload it somewhere to the Keep On Creating Facebook page or DM me with the design. I'd like to see what you guys create. So working around the same sort of concept as we did for the Affinity Designer tutorial, we're gonna do a similar concept, obviously a different design, because we don't want to recreate stuff. We want to create new stuff. That's what Keep On Creating is about. It's creating new stuff. Basically, we're gonna take that font and do some punching actions with the Pathfinder tool and create some cool effects. Let's dive right in. Let's jump right in and head on up here to Illustrator, go across to File and click on that. And we're gonna go new, get a new document open here. As per normal, I'm gonna make myself a really nice big artboard page. So I'm gonna go 500 by 500. All the rest of this can just stay the same. And let's click Create and get our new artboard going. Let's bring it up here. Now, I do wanna work with my rulers in this. So I'm gonna get my rulers up, Command R, or you're gonna head up here and you're gonna go View. Drop all the way down here to rulers and click on show rulers. Mine says hide rulers at the moment. Also, just a quick tip is just make sure your smart guides are turned on. Smart guides are brilliant. They just help guiding things. Let me just give you a quick demonstration. So you can see how everything's snapping there. That's actually smart guides. That 45 degree line, that's a smart guide. So if you drop that there and I get my pointer tool and I click and I drag, you can see how it's just gonna snap to that. That's all smart guides snapping everywhere. Basically what I'm trying to say is just make sure you've got your smart guides turned on. Let's go ahead and choose a font. So I'm gonna hit T to get my text tool up. So hit T or you're gonna head on over here to your palette and you see it says type tool. That's the tool we're looking for. Just click anywhere on your page and let's just write on our text. So what we're gonna type in is some um, keep on and we're gonna put that creating in here. So I'm just gonna make a duplicate of that. Now, just to make a duplicate of that, all it did basically was click on this, hold down Alt and drag. And you can see it makes just a whole duplicate copy of that. Just triple clicking again, and I'm gonna type in creating. So we've got our text over here. I'm just gonna get them in and drag a marquee over both of them. Just zoom out a little bit and hit E to get my expand tool up, hold shift and click and drag. And you can see I'm just making it nice and big so that we can just see our font nice and big. Let's choose a font. So I'm gonna head up here to this font menu up here and let's see, we need something bold and just something that's gonna be punchy for this. So maybe let's try uh, Komodo. Let's have a look, Komodo. Uh, definitely not that fuzzy one. Let's see if it's got a regular. Okay, I'm not digging those full rounded corners. Let's choose another one. Let's go, I think Hillside, Hills Town, that's the one. And I think Hills Town has two different versions. So we can have this rough version so we don't have to do that stamp effect, which we have done in a previous video, but we don't have to go ahead and do that. We can just leave that on there. And it's also got a clean version. So that's a perfect style font we're gonna be using there. What I really like about this style of font, it's got these slight little round edges everywhere that we don't have to actually go and basically tweak and adjust and everything. They're there ready for us to just take further makes it a lot easier. Let's see how we're gonna arrange these today. So how are we gonna do this? First of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert these to outlines. So just drag your marquee over everything there and go Command, Shift and O. Or you can head up here to type and drop down to create outlines, which is this option over here. So just click on that and we want to convert our text to outlines so that we don't have to worry about the font anymore. I am going to take, let's just divide this up. So we want keep on and I am going to ungroup this. So I'm gonna go Command Shift G and to ungroup it. Now what ungrouping does, it separates all the letters so you can see I can drag them individually. Not that I wanna do that. I wanna basically take that ting over there and this create over here and I'm gonna group them separately. So I've basically dragged the marquee over that section, go on Command G and drag the marquee over this section and Command G. So now you can see I've got these two different sections. Now with my rulers, I wanna get my rulers. I'm gonna click on the side over here. And I'm gonna drag this in 
and just make sure it snaps to the edge of that K. So I'm just going to drag it, just snap it there. Just going to move it along to this side. Give a ruler again and drag it across to this side of here. Snap it. So we've got our basically our working parameters that we're going to be working in. I'm going to just drag this create part. Well, the first part of the create part, just snap it to that side. Drag this one, snap it to this side. Where is it? There it goes, somewhere on there. Let's just zoom in. Yeah, that's cool. And I'm just going to move that down a little bit. Let's click on this here. Hit E to get your expand tool, your transform tool. Hold shift and click and drag out to this line over here. So we've got this nice parallel section going over there. We're going to do the exact same with this one and drag it up there. So we've got this keep on creating. Now, how can we zazz this up a little bit so it's not so boring? I think quick and simple. Let's take this and put it up here and take this and put it up there. Now you can see it instantly. That looks pretty good. Now, if you're a bit of a perfectionist and you want the same gap between here and this section over here, we could just get a rectangle tool. So you just push M and get this tool up here, which is your rectangle tool. Just zoom in here. So I'm just going to zoom right in and we could measure the distance between uh, this point and the top of that E. And just I'm just going to move my window down a bit. Hit that and just drag it down to the bottom of the E and then we can just move this up a little bit there. And then what that does, just delete that rectangle and zoom back out. So what that does, it just keeps that exact same gap in between those two there. So not only are we nicely justified or parallel on the sides, we've got the same gap in between here and here. It just, uh, just adds to everything. I'm thinking what would be actually quite cool is to put a line at the top and the bottom. Obviously, there is no line for this type of font. So what we could do, we could probably use this eye over here. So let's click this, hold down Alt, click and drag that down. Okay, just to make another duplicate of it. I'm going to ungroup it. So Command Shift G and let's just delete those two bits over there. Select this eye. I'm going to rotate it around. So just hit R or you can hit your rotate tool, which is this tool over here. I'm going to click that, rotate it. Okay, and let's just get this exact same width. So we want it basically from here and we're going to want it just to go all the way to there. Let's switch on our rulers again. So just go command and this colon and you can see it pops up that up again. Just drag it in a little bit. We went a little bit far. Hold down Alt again and I'm just going to join those two. So you can see if I just select all three of those and move it down. You see, we've got basically this long line. Just select all three of them, head on over to your Pathfinder tool over here, click on that, and just, just click on this Unite button and it just unites everything there. So it just creates a nice solid line. And what we do want to do is put another one at the top. So let's just click that, hold down Alt, and drag it to the top. Let's just make it a little bit more space, and you can see what the Smart Guide's actually doing. On my right hand side there, it's giving those two little pink up and down arrow sections. It's saying that that line width is the same from the top line and that middle section between Cre and keep on. And we basically want to do the exact same for this little bit over here. Just going to do that. And you can see it gives us that indicator. Perfect. We are now nicely in line with everything. Switch off those rulers. Nice in line here, 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 and here. Moving on to creating the text effect that we we're going to want to do here. We're going to actually pretend that there is no clean version of this font. So we're not saying clean version or this a roughed up stamp bit over here. We're going to think that there is no clean version of this font, although there is, but there is not. If you know what I mean, just you, you follow me. So I'm going to select everything here. Just make select everything there. I'm going to go copy command C. And I'm going to head over here, just make a new layer and just go Command Shift V and it's going to place it the exact same place on another layer. So you can see I've just got two layers there. You could just get your layer basically and drop it on that layer because it's the only thing we've got on that layer. But just for now, copy and paste what your elements are and then that's that's going to work. I'm going to switch off the top layer. Okay, so all we left with is this bottom layer, this bottom layer one. And let's just actually just call that shadow so we don't get confused. Okay, okay, before it gets too confusing, I'm basically what I'm trying to do is just separate out some layers so it doesn't get confusing when I'm working and what I'm clicking and all that. I've got a special ability to confuse just about anybody. Agreed. Hey. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select our background shadow layer. So I'm just going to click on that and that automatically selects this shadow layer, not the top layer because that's locked. And let's just make it blue. 
Okay, so the, it is actually blue behind there, but we can't see it. So with it selected, I'm gonna hit and appear to object, drop all the way down to compound path, and you can see this release function over here. Now that is a mega quick key, so it's Alt Shift Command 8. So if you just click on that, or you can exercise your fingers and push all those buttons, and you can see it basically releases everything from our com compound clip. So I'm just gonna switch off that layer so you can see what I'm talking about. So everything there is released. Now, obviously we need this R, the A, the P, and the O. We need the inside of those. So let's ungroup this entire object. So go Command, Shift, G, that's ungrouping it. I'm just gonna click off, and now you can see not everything is selecting when I'm going around holding Shift and selecting those little elements there. So I've just got those little elements there. Now what I'm gonna do is, this is the way I work when I'm working really fast. I just select those four elements there. Okay, I'm gonna unite them together. So I'm gonna click on this Unite, hit Expand. I'm gonna cut them. So I'm gonna go Command X, cut them out, drag my marquee over everything here, go back up to the Shape Modes and click on this Unite button, just click on Expand. Okay, now that is one object still. I'm gonna go Command F, it pastes our objects that were in our clipboard straight back to where they were. Hold Shift, click on the rest of our artwork, head back up here to a Pathfinder and click on this minus and just click Expand. Now you can see we've got our solid effect going on here. So now if I switch on our layer two again, you can see it's now peeking through all those little bits there to where it's distressed. It's now filled in those because it's released its compound clip. Let's just zoom right in here. So I'm just zooming in there. I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna drag this out while holding Alt to, let's just give it a good drag. So let's stick it about there. So holding Alt and Shift, nice 45 degree angle and release. So there's a duplicate of that layer. So I've dragged it here and you can still see it's got that duplicate behind it to just switch that off so you can see how it's duplicated over there. Now what I want is, I want this to be joined over here. So I want this blue section to join this blue section over here, likewise over here, maybe even like that little section there and this R. So we could go in with our pen tool and draw all of these, but that's just too long and it'll just take forever. So if we just select our shadow and our shadow shadow, so those two sections there, I'm gonna go back up here to object and drop down to blend. So there's blend over there and you're gonna say make, okay, and it makes that one step over there. We wanna expand on that blend. So go back to your blend, go down to blend options and it brings up this window here with our options. Click on that preview because we do wanna see what's going on and select the specified steps. And you can see it says one at the moment because there's one little step there. If we type in something mega like 30, hit tab, and you can see it creates that nice solid line going across everything there. So I've just got click OK. You can see it's actually gone ahead and drawn all those in there, saving us a whole bunch of time. The only thing we've got to do is expand this because it's not currently seeing that little shape over there. So you can actually see it's just drawing this shape and this shape. We needed to just draw in that shape there. So head back over here to object. Good drop down to expand and let's go OK and you go woof and that's just basically it's like when you expand a, a gradient, it's giving you all those lines over there. Head up to your Pathfinder, just quickly go ungroup, Command Shift G, and then hit this Unite button and click Expand. Now you can see it's given us that solid line in between everything there. Moving on, let's have a look how we're gonna create this step to fix. So looking at this line over here, that's kind of the angle that I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit again there, and I'm gonna get my rectangle tool here, click and drag and just make an awfully, uh, wow, this is gonna to have to be a very, very long rectangle. So I'm gonna just click over there, hit E, and just really, I think, expand it out. I may be going a bit too long. Okay, so let's just keep that there. I'm gonna just drag it up here. Now I want this angle of this rectangle here to be similar to that angle over there. So I am gonna get my rotate tool up, R, okay, and just rotate it around to about there. I'm just gonna bring that in, okay. And you can see I've almost got it there, just hit R, and when you're happy with your angle, I think that's cool, that'll work. So when you're happy with your angle, uh, you can just leave it like that. I'm gonna bring it all the way to here. Now you can see why I needed it so long. I basically needed to cover all the way to this bottom section over here, because I want all of these lines to be very consistent and very the, the same as what that line is there, and to cover all that section over there, and I'll probably just confuse absolutely everybody. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna click this, drag it, while holding Alt and Shift, and just create a tiny little gap in between. 
Do I want them thinner? I think I want these a little bit thinner. So I'm just going to hit E and just going to make that a little bit thinner. So just drag it in there. Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay, zoom back out here. Click, drag, make a tiny little bit of a gap there. Uh, that's cool. I'm basically looking for that gap to be very similar to that gap over there. Obviously, if you've got the time, go in there and measure out that the same way as we measured out these this gap over here. It's up to you to do. And now I'm just going to go Command D and just hold down that Command D and it just dupes everything there. So carries on going, carries on going, carries on going. And let's just go down to the bottom here, carries on going. So you can see how long that line had to be to basically cover from the top section all the way down to the bottom section over here. Now you can see what I mean. Let's just click a marquee and just select that bottom bit over there. So we select all those little bits. If you drag over everything, obviously we don't want to select all the scump over here. I'm going to head back up to Pathfinder and click on Unite and click Expand. And now we've got that that is just one big object. Now let's just zoom in here. I'm going to click on our lines. Just hover over our shadow bit, click on that, and head back up here to Pathfinder and click on this intersect option. If I click on that, you can see it basically intersects everything. Just click expand, and now we've got that cool shadow type effect. Oh, that's looking really cool. I do feel that the join from here to this section over here is probably not exactly what I want, and I don't really want it peeking through our distress bit over there. So, likewise, what we did when we expanded this compound clip, but that's exactly what I'm going to be doing next. So, let's lock our shadow layer. So, I'm going to lock that shadow layer, unlock this top layer, I'm going to select it copy it come on C okay lock it again let's make a layer in between these two so I'm just gonna go and click create new layer there's our new layer let's call it in between it's pretty obvious but who knows we confuse myself sometimes and I'm gonna go come on F paste it in there head on up here to object drop all the way down to compound path and release with that massive quickie ungroup everything here Okay, I'm just going to hold shift and deselect those bits in here and just hit this unite button, head over to expand, okay. So now I'm doing this the opposite way around, I'm going to go command X, select those bits here, unite them up, hit expand, command B to make it to the back and select those two and then click on this minus front. So moving pretty quickly there. But it's exactly the same way as what we did a little bit earlier, just a tiny little bit of a different way around. So with that selected, let's make that white, okay? And let's select this stroke layer over here, click on white, okay? Head over to the stroke, and let's just expand it up a bit. So you see it creates a little bit of a break in between our shadow effect and our actual graphic. And now that's white behind there, starting to look a little bit cleaner. Let's unlock all our layers, click on our shadow layer, so let's just select our shadows, head back up to swatches, and make that fill black, and you can see how cool that looks there. And what we end up with is an awesome looking single color print that's gonna be cost effective. If you wanted to add color to this, you go ahead and chop and change some colors there until the cows come home. Cows come home, why did I say that? And that about brings us to the end of another episode. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, follow us on all our social channels linked over here below, and until next time, keep on creating. I'm out of here.